Now to Capitol Hill, where Chief Congressional Correspondent Nancy Cordes tells us calls are growing louder for a special prosecutor. I trusted Jim Comey. The president's showboat comment about Comey drew instant pushback today from the leaders of the Senate Intelligence Committee. I found him to be one of the most ethical, upright, straightforward individuals I've had the opportunity to work with. Comey's firing has consumed the Capitol. This is an astonishing chain of events. Prompting rare bipartisan agreement. I do have questions about both the rationale and the timing and certainly have communicated that to the White House. But the two sides still part ways over the need for a special independent prosecutor. We need the support of Republican members of Congress. Utah Republican Orrin Hatch. Every time we have any controversy around here, they want to call for a special prosecutor. We have a Justice Department that's very capable. Ultimately, it isn't up to Congress. It's up to Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, who wrote that critical Comey memo. Democratic leader Chuck Schumer sent Rosenstein a list of 27 questions today. Did the president or anyone else direct you to write your memo? Were you aware when you drafted it that it would be used to justify Comey's firing? Rosenstein came to Capitol Hill today, not to answer questions, but to meet with the leaders of Senate intelligence. Did Mr. Rosenstein confirm that he threatened to quit over the handling of the Comey firing, and did you ask him about that? We didn't ask him about it. He didn't share it with us. We were focused on deconfliction. That term, deconfliction, refers to the efforts underway right now between the Senate and the FBI to make sure that their Russia investigations don't interfere with one another. Anthony, late this afternoon, the Senate's majority leader invited Rosenstein to come back to the Capitol next week to brief the entire Senate behind closed doors. Nancy Cordes, thank you, Nancy.